Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. It's really nice to be back to normality. Tonight we're going to be looking at the upcoming games for this week, but we're going to do it slightly differently. So we've picked 10 as per usual of the 15 or so that are coming out this week. But what we're going to do is we are going to rank them from least anticipated up to most anticipated, having had a brief discussion between us before making this video. The first game on our list is called Irony Curtain from Matroska with Love. I think that's how you say it. I've just killed that pronunciation, but it's fine. It's from Artifacts Monday and it's £17.99, which seems awfully high. Now, as you'd expect in the description, it says that they take inspiration from point and click adventure games of old, but let's be honest, who doesn't? Let's just hope that they don't go overboard and end up butchering what could potentially be quite a funny and quirky Cold War spy tale. Matryoshka. Wonderful presentation. Oh, uh, thank you, Miss... Uh... Anna Iglov. This envelope will help you contact me. Anna. Authorities. Envelope. Wait, what? Official purpose of your visit is to prepare for an interview with the leader. Okay, at number nine for this week then, we have a game called Furwind, which is an action platformer with a pixel art style. Now, I was talking to one of our subscribers, Saberwolf, and a couple of others actually, in our Discord chat the other day about this game, and he was saying that the titular character reminded him of a character in a game called Titus from a few years ago on the Amiga, and I can see where he's coming from. Having just watched the trailer, this actually looks pretty good to be fair, and the price is pretty much on point as well. I know some people will be put off by the pixel art style, but again, I like what it does with it. It has decent animation in the background, a nice bit of parallax scrolling, and a good colour palette. The next game, number eight on the list, is called Baobab's Mausoleum, and it's the second episode, 1313 Barnabas Dead End Drive. And if that sounds absolutely bonkers, it really is. You take on the role of Watracio, who is an eggplant detective. He originally rocks up Silent Hill style to the town and strange things suddenly start happening and everything starts changing. This is a very funny series. We met the developer recently at EGX, it's just one guy. He's an absolutely top fella, he had a little chat with us and he was just so pleased that we reviewed his game. It's a top down style, almost point and click game, but constantly throws curveballs at the player. This is one I'm really looking forward to and if you haven't checked out the first one, I highly recommend it. Right, coming in at number seven then, we have We the Revolution. Now this is set in the French Revolution and sees you taking charge of a judge on the Revolutionary Tribunal, passing sentence against various people and playing, and I quote, a dangerous political game. Now, we've watched the trailer for this, and although it looks very interesting, it's one of those trailers that doesn't give very much away, but from what I can ascertain from the blurb, it seems that the decisions you make in terms of the sentences you pass will then have an impact on your personal life, and the story will play out differently as a result of this. It's £17.99, or your original equivalent. It's hard to know what to make of it yet because the trailer is so vague, but it's certainly different, that's for sure. Quality. Ah, gentlemen, we have defiled equality as much as they have freedom. How can a man who cannot read or write be our equal, fight for slogans he does not understand? Is the fallen king our equal? Equality. We have convinced people to believe in it, and they grabbed their torches and thanked us by impaling the rich's heads on pikes. Equality. Even animals know that there is only... Coming in at number six is a game called Rain City. It's around about five pounds, so it's not overly expensive, and I absolutely love the art style here. It's a puzzler where you take on a character trying to find his lost sister, and it plays out like a series of mini games, if you will, working your way through the city. I really like the audio that they've gone for, and at that price, this is about right, really. There is currently a demo on the eShop, so maybe check it out before you buy.
Coming in at number five then, we have Devil May Cry. Now, I could imagine that some people would have had this higher on their list, and that's fair enough. But the reason that we're so-so on this release is that, first of all, it's a port of an older game that's seen a HD collection released on other consoles, and this is just the first game on the Switch. Secondly, with that in mind, it's £16. And finally, I'll be honest, maybe this is just a personal gripe, but Capcom's attitude towards the Switch in terms of physical releases has just annoyed me a little bit, I've got to be honest. This is a good game, I remember getting it for Christmas along with Pro Evolution Soccer back on the PlayStation 2, but I don't think I'll be picking this one up personally. Yeah, Capcom's been very strange with the Switch, haven't they? Coming in at number 4 is probably one of my most anticipated games this week, it's called Graveyard Keeper and it describes itself as the most inaccurate medieval cemetery management sim of the year. It looks like exactly that. You take on a plot of land where you have to manage a cemetery. You can plant crops around, you can sell things and also go on some types of quest. There's a funny line in here about potentially scaring the locals into visiting church. So I think there's going to be far more to this one than meets the eye. What do you reckon about this one Glenn? I'd be interested to hear. From the little I've seen of it so far, apparently the better you make up the corpses before you bury them, the more points you get and then you can convert those points into <laughs> tokens that you then can spend in the pub or something like that. <laughs> it looks very, very strange. It's, um, yeah, it's Stardew Valley-esque, I suppose, in terms of its layout, but with a very, very dark and probably quite humorous tone as well. Okay, coming in at third place and taking the bronze for this week then, we've bundled them in together. It's the two Sega Ages releases, which is Wonder Boy and Virtual Racing. I'm gonna be honest, for me, it's all about Virtual Racing this week. I've been waiting for this game to hit the UK eShop ever since it launched on the Japanese store a couple of weeks ago. Mark, I know you're a big Wonder Boy fan, so I'm assuming you're looking forward to that one. Yeah, I think this was the Wonder Boy I watched my older brother play through before we then got onto Dragon's Trap. But yeah, like you say, really looking forward to this one. Which takes us on to number two, and it's gonna be no surprise that it's up in the top two, but it's Mario Maker 2. Now interestingly, and nothing to do with Mario Maker 2, it was nice to see that they'd included a level editor of sorts into the remake of Link's Awakening, and I wonder if down the line we might see some form of Zelda Maker, now that's something I'd get on board with. But this version of Mario Maker includes a lot of the features the community asked for, and it should have a really thriving online community. Yeah, I put a good 40, 50 hours into the first Mario Maker on the Wii U. I'd be interested to see how this one plays without the use of the gamepad, which made the first game feel very intuitive. I'm very much looking forward to this one. I am slightly disappointed that they haven't put more art styles in there, but I'm also hoping that maybe there'll be a couple of surprise reveals just before launch.
and taking our number one spot for this week. Probably no surprise now you've seen what number two is and it's Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Now this game has been highly anticipated ever since its Kickstarter way back in, I don't know, it was about 2014 now, wasn't it? It was a few years ago. This of course comes from the mind of Koji Igarashi, one of the men behind the Castlevania series, especially Symphony of the Night. Yeah, Glenn, you're gonna hate me for this, but I never actually played the original Castlevania games. So for me, it's a slightly different experience. I'm looking forward to seeing what this original style was all about. Yeah, I'm assuming that it's gonna take the majority of its cues from Symphony of the Night. My personal favorite Castlevania game is Castlevania 4 on the Super Nintendo, which was much more linear. But having said that, I do very much enjoy the others as well. And as said, I am looking forward to this game. Lovely, so there we have it. Slightly tweaked formula. It was Glenn's idea, I like it. Let us know down in the comments if we're completely wrong or if you've got other games that we haven't mentioned. For example, the wonderful Fort Boyard. Where's Melinda Messenger when you, when you need her? Yeah, please do stick your 10 most anticipated or from 10 to one in the comments. It'd be interesting to see how you'll stack up against ours. I'm assuming a lot of people will have Mario Maker 2 at number one and that's fair enough. Thank you as always for watching. Take it easy and until next time, of course, happy gaming. Yeah, and thanks to our patrons who support the channel each and every month and to all of the new subscribers. We're well on our way to 40,000, which is, man, you didn't think we'd be saying that, did you, Glenn? Crazy. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.